This is Rosie. She was a sheepdog, a Border Collie Kelpie mix, and she was our family dog while our kids were growing up. She was patient, kind, and loving, unless and until you posed a threat. I remember one morning the kids and Rosie were playing in the front yard. An unsuspecting salesman wandered by. If you stayed in the street, you did not come onto the property. No worries, no foul. Rosie didn't care. That unsuspecting young salesman crossed the property line. Rosie sensed a threat and immediately transformed from loving, patient, and kind to protector. Hackles came up, teeth came out, guttural growl ensued. She did her best impression of Tasmanian Devil and chased that poor young man to the edge of the property line. I have no idea how long and how far he ran. Rosie stopped at the edge of the property. Hackles down, tail began to wag. Everything was once again right in her domain. The threat had been eliminated. Not long after, I remember taking the family and heading to town for the afternoon. Without really thinking about it, we left Rosie in the backyard behind a six foot wood privacy fence. Fine, safe, well contained. About an hour into our foray into town, I got a call from the neighbor across the street that Rosie had escaped. Come to find out that she had actually managed to chew her way through the bottom of that cedar privacy fence. Painstakingly, voraciously, she ate through the bottom of that fence until she was able to escape. Once she broke free from captivity, she did not get into the trash, wandered to the neighbors, chased the postal person. She proceeded to the front porch where she sat patiently watching over her domain until we returned home. There was no doubt in Rosie's mind, absolute clarity that our property was her dominion, her domain, the children were her sheep, that was her mission, that was her purpose. Honestly, it took me a while to come to grips with how important that was to her. I learned the hard way that if you try to keep her from her mission, keep her from her purpose, contain her, redirect her in any way, shape, or form, two things ensued. You had an unhappy sheepdog and likely a ruined fence. My name is Patterson Cake. Welcome to Cultivating Cyber Warriors. You, your business, have digital sheep, otherwise known as IT assets. These cyber wolves are increasing in number and boldness. If you're not aware, you should turn on the news. In the current climate, you need cyber sheepdogs whose purpose is to guard your domain, to protect your digital sheep. You already know that they're hard to come by. You probably already know that they can be occasionally a little hard to get along with. Today, I'd like to talk about understanding the breed and some ideas, thoughts, strategies around maximizing their performance, promoting growth, development, and retention. Let's start by covering three presuppositions that underpin the remainder of this conversation. One, being compared to a sheepdog in this context is a compliment. Number two, being a sheepdog, a cyber sheepdog, a vigilant protector of your domain, of your realm, of your sheep, is a high calling. Three, as a cybersecurity professional, someone is actively trying to circumvent, undermine, otherwise destroy the work that you do all day, every day. They are trying to prevent you from accomplishing your mission. The likelihood is that those you are trying to protect don't understand and or appreciate what you do for them. You're often seen as a cost center and an impediment to productivity. Honestly, you're outgunned and hopelessly outnumbered by the wolves. If this is something that you signed up for, if this is something that you do 
by choice every day, then you are a unique breed. You are a cybersecurity sheepdog. The first of our four points to ponder when it comes to understanding cyber sheepdogs and working with cyber sheepdogs is imposter syndrome. As previously mentioned, the cyber sheepdogs are hopelessly outnumbered and outgunned. It's not uncommon for them to lay awake at night wondering just how many and just how big the wolves are that are lurking in the shadows, quite literally counting sheep. This is where imposter syndrome kicks in. It leaves the cybersecurity sheepdog wondering, are they up to the task? Are they adequate to the task? Am I fast enough? Am I strong enough? Do I know enough? Am I vigilant enough? Invariably, the answer to that question in the cyber sheepdog's heart is a feeling of inadequacy, ultimately fear of failure. And this does not make for a happy or fulfilled cyber sheepdog. First and foremost, we need to understand that this is how they feel. This is how important their vision, their mission, their purpose is to them. And we need to understand their fear. We need to understand potentially the sense of internal inadequacy. And then we need to communicate to them that they will never be fast enough. They will never be strong enough. They will never be vigilant enough. And that's okay. That is not their success criteria. Their success criteria is using their experience, their talents to the best of their ability to protect their domain. Next, we need to cultivate a culture of honesty and humility. Honesty and humility are the antithesis to imposter syndrome. If you are being honest with yourself, with your team, with your manager about your skills, your abilities, your experience, your capabilities and competence, you are by definition not an imposter. In addition, the honest assessment of what you know, what a cyber sheepdog knows and doesn't know should be their measuring stick. This is how you determine your growth area, your progress. You can't be fast enough, you can't be strong enough, you can't be smart enough, but you can be faster, stronger, and smarter. Finally, this is critically important, other people, or more accurately, your assessment of other people cannot be your measuring stick. Other people cannot be your measuring stick. You will always come up short, always. Stop it. <clears throat> Point number two in our consideration of the cyber sheepdog is the idea that success breeds success. I am a student of all things tactical. I spent a lot of time and energy studying first responders. The cognitive and behavioral parallels between first responders and cybersecurity professionals are striking. One of the things that I stumbled upon is the idea that success breeds success. Let's start with the idea that failure is difficult to overcome. There is a book called Wet Mind, New Cognitive Neuroscience, and by new, we're talking late 90s, in which Coslin and Koenig, the authors, report that conditioned fear can be extremely difficult to extinguish. It cannot be eliminated through passive deterioration or even active attempts to do so. This is not a mystery. You've seen it before. The idea that conditioned fear is very, very difficult to overcome. What I'd like to discuss and highlight today is that the opposite is also true. The conditioned success can be very difficult to overcome. One of my favorite illustrations of this idea comes from a research project by a gentleman named Mike Spix called the ACE Factor. And in the ACE Factor, uh, Mike Spix studies aces versus turkeys. And in this context, we're talking about actual pilots that were engaged in air-to-air -air combat. Those that were successful are aces. Those that were not successful were turkeys. What Mike found was fascinating. He studied a great many instances and came to the conclusion that for whatever reason, after five successful air combat engagements, the pilots that were successful became nearly unstoppable. They found definitively if they could 
engage, train, engineer successful combat engagements for these pilots five times made them almost unbeatable, almost unstoppable. Unfortunately, we frequently set our cyber sheepdogs up for failure. We often ignore them until crisis. When we do pay special attention to what they do, their mission, their purpose, often it is in the form of a pen test or a red team engagement or external auditors, none of whom are there to reinforce the cyber sheepdog success. It's like if I went into the yard with my dog Rosie and I grabbed the tennis ball and I threw it on the roof and she sat there bewildered and I scolded her. I knew you could get the ball. This is often how we relate to our cyber sheepdogs. We unfortunately reinforced the imposter syndrome and fail to understand that success breeds success. What I would like to suggest to you is that you make it a priority to engineer and acknowledge wins for your cyber sheepdogs. Consider rebranding and refocusing your pen test, your red team exercise, your IR tabletop, whatever. Set the success criteria potentially for bolstering the confidence of your cyber sheepdog, for cultivating unstoppable aces. Success breeds success. Our third point to ponder when relating to and understanding cyber sheepdogs is called throw the damn ball. Just a gentle reminder about what is important to and what motivates our cyber sheepdogs. As I'm sure you've surmised by this point, Rosie is no longer with us. Our kids are mostly grown and gone. Naturally, we've replaced them with additional sheepdogs. This is Bell and Leia, lower left-hand corner of the slide. For better or for worse, the kids are gone, and the tennis ball has become, in many ways, the replacement. Bell's mission in life is to protect that ball. And when you take and throw the ball, I'm pretty convinced that she's thinking that the ball is leaving the relative safety of her domain, and she must and she will stop and retrieve it. Quite literally, if I go into the yard right now with a built bone in one hand and a ball in the other, and I throw them both into the yard without hesitation, Bell will follow the ball, retrieve, and return it. Now, that's not to say she doesn't appreciate a good milk bone, but it is not her mission. It is not her purpose. Point in fact, again, in the industry, I see a trend towards the appreciation of the cyber sheepdog and the attempt to lure the cyber sheepdog with 150,000 milk bones a year. Again, Bell appreciates a milk bone, but it is not what motivates her. It is not what gives her fulfillment and satisfaction in a job well done, in a role well defined. Remember the cyber sheepdog mission. Define their mission for them, support their mission. Understand that they are missional. They are purpose-driven and purpose-built. If and when you are able, socialize their mission to the organization so that those that they are protecting, those that they are serving, understand why they're there, what they're doing, and how important it is to them. Finally, if the mission changes, which it will in the average organization, if and when the mission changes, make sure they understand. Make sure they understand their new mission that you communicate. The children are gone. Now we need to protect the ball. Our fourth and final point in our consideration of the cyber sheepdog is titled sacrificial lambs. How many sacrificial lambs are acceptable to the sheepdog? Having spent the last 15 or so minutes discussing how the sheepdog thinks, what motivates the sheepdog, the answer likely leaps immediately to mind, precisely none. There is no such thing as an acceptable sacrificial lamb in the heart and mind of the sheepdog. Unfortunately, that is not the world we live in. As an organization, as a business, we are often faced with difficult decisions, decisions that require a sacrificial lamb for the greater good. 
whether that might be discontinuing a product, retiring a code base, reducing budget, reducing staffing, eliminating a line of business. Difficult decisions which are normal and occur all the time in your organizations. This is hard for the sheepdog or the cyber sheepdog to understand or relate to. They may have spent a great deal of time and energy protecting that code base, protecting that line of business, protecting that data repository. And it's difficult to adjust, refocus, reframe that that's no longer important. That is no longer a priority. It's important that you understand once again, their missional perspective, their greater purpose, and that you clearly communicate to them the requirements, the logic, the decision-making process, and maybe even let them grieve on a certain level, a sacrificial lamb in the line of work, and that you then gently redirect them to new, clearly defined mission and purpose. If you swap out their ball for a Frisbee, tell them, and tell them why. Help them to understand that it makes a difference and that this is their new mission. In conclusion, I'd like to encourage you to recognize that imposter syndrome is real. Work on cultivating a culture of honesty and humility to combat imposter syndrome. Remember that success breed success and seek out, celebrate, engineer success for your cyber sheepdogs. Remember that milk bones alone are not enough to satisfy the cyber sheepdog, that they need mission and purpose. And finally, make sure that your cyber sheepdogs understand their mission, understand their purpose, and that it aligns with the needs and directions of the organization. Thank you so much for joining this presentation. Thank you to Portland OWASP for the opportunity to share and for all of the hard work that goes into making a virtual conference like this come together. For better or for worse, this is, this is an invisible tennis ball. Do you think it's distracting when my hair disappears? God, recording yourself is terrible. Talk about imposter syndrome. Yeah. <laughs>